guys. We're reading Where the Mountain Meets the Moon by Grace Lynn. Today we're reading chapter 13 and chapter 14. At the end of chapter 12, it says, And with a bow, the goldfish man walked away. His bowls of goldfish cast pieces of rainbows in the air, making him sparkle in the sun. Ma and Ba stood and watched him until he looked like a twinkling star in the distance. Okay, here's chapter 15. After cutting the dragon free, Min Lee's knife was dull, and the skin on her fingers and toes was wrinkled from having been in the dragon's lake of tears for so long. She was also very thirsty. The dragon offered to carry her to the freshwater stream. He knew the forest well. You'll get there much faster, he said. Min Lee was a little doubtful about riding the dragon. It was one thing to climb on top of him while he was half covered by water, but now on dry land, she realized how large he really was. The dragon was long, as long as the street in front of Min Lee's house. If he stretched himself up on his arms and legs, he was as tall as a bird's nest in a tree, she realized. Even now, bending down for her, he was higher than her house. But he bent his elbow for her like a step, and with two hands she boosted herself up and then climbed onto his back. The round ball on the dragon's head was the size of a small melon, just big enough for her to wrap two hands around, and she clutched it as the dragon began to move. It was faster, but not much. The dragon was nimble, but his, but his large body had to constantly maneuver around trees and rocks, so it was awkward going. The constant jerky, jerking made Min Lee feel like she was riding a huge water buffalo. As the dragon ducked underneath branches and swerved through trees, Min Lee understood why most dragons flew. Dragon, Min Lee asked suddenly, how old are you? Old? The dragon said, and again it seemed a question he had never been asked. I do not know. Well, Min Lee said, how long have you been in this forest? The dragon thought hard. A long time, he told her. I remember when a bird flew from the sky and dropped a peach pit onto the ground. I watched that pit grow into a tree, and the peaches fell from the tree, and more trees grew from the pits of those peaches, until it became the grove of peach trees that the monkeys have now taken over. He is very old, Min Lee thought to herself, imagining the growth of the trees. The dragon must have been in this forest for a hundred years. And she felt a pang of pity as she imagined the dragon, alone, unable to fly, endlessly struggling between trees and branches. After picking up her things and drinking at the freshwater stream, Min Lee climbed back onto the dragon's back. She soon fell asleep, her head on the dragon's ball and her hand holding the rice bowl. Noticing she was asleep, the dragon moved slowly and quietly, even when the water from Min Lee's compass splashed and trickled down his nose. It was only when a loud shrieking filled the forest that Min Lee woke. It was such a wild and harsh noise that she bolted up, her eyes wide open in fear. Do not worry, the dragon told her. It is just the monkeys. And it was the monkeys. Even though the sun was dimming, Min Lee could still see the monkeys clamoring in the trees. Even though Min Lee could not count that many of them, their screaming made it sound as if there were thousands. We are getting close to the peach trees, the dragon told Min Lee, and they are getting angry. Stop here, Min Lee said. She climbed off the dragon's back, and she could still see the monkeys through leaves and branches, their bared teeth flashing. Those peach trees are exactly the direction we want to go, Min Lee said. We have to get past the monkeys. I could still force my way through, but the monkeys would attack you, Dragon said. 
I am not sure if we could get you through unharmed. Listen to them. And the monkeys continued to scream. Minley covered her ears with her hands, but she could still hear them. It sounded like they were screeching, Get away from here! Ours! Ours! All ours! You're right, Minley told the dragon. They are not going to let us through. But you said that is the way to the old man of the moon, said the dragon, correct? Minley nodded. The monkey's shrieks were starting to sound like hysterical laughter, getting louder and louder like a volcano about to erupt. She looked from side to side, but the monkey seemed to be everywhere. There was no way around them. Then, the dragon asked, what are we going to do? Chapter 14 Minley and the dragon had sat in the clearing and made camp for the night. As the sun fell and the moon rose, the dragon showed her how he could make sparks by scratching his paws against a stone, and they built a small campfire. As Minley and the dragon made no moves to go farther into the forest, the monkeys had quieted down, but they still watched. There are plenty of peaches for all, dragon said. Those monkeys do not have to be so greedy. Really? Minley asked. Yes, Dragon said. The monkeys are so foolish. They just want more and more even when they do not get it. I have seen them refuse to let go of rotten mushrooms and fight over piles of mud. At those words, Minley sat up and her eyes flashed with quick thinking. Piles of mud. Suddenly, Minley remembered the two children fighting over their piles of mud as she had left her village. Instead of going inside for dinner, the children had clung to their pretend dishes of dirt. They were so foolish. Could the monkeys be that foolish? They were too selfish for trading or bribes. But maybe they were so greedy that they could be foolish enough to be tricked. Maybe if she... I'm going to make rice, Minley said abruptly. Oh, the dragon said, you must be hungry. Too bad we cannot get you some peaches. It's not for me, Minley said, and she smiled mysteriously. It's for the monkeys. The monkeys? The dragon said. Why? If you mean it as a gift or as a way to bribe them, it will not work. They will take it and eat it, but they still will not let you through. That is what I'm expecting, Minley said as she filled her pot with water and uncooked rice. She was bursting to tell Dragon her idea, but wasn't sure how much the monkeys understood of their words. She looked at him with sparkling eyes, but he only stared back blankly. You are? the dragon said. I do not understand. Don't worry, Minley said, and with her eagerness she felt like the water she was boiling. I think I know how we can pass the monkeys. The dragon watched as Minli stirred the big pot of rice. Through the rising steam, he could see the beady eyes of all the monkeys glittering through the branches, like hundreds of diamonds, as they watched as well. The monkeys are watching, he whispered to Minli. Good, she whispered back. I hope they are. When the rice was done, the pot was overflowing with snowy white rice. It was so heavy that to take it off the fire to cool, she had to ask the dragon to move it for her. Minley had the dragon place it very close to the trees where the monkeys were watching. Then, Minley tied her fishnet over the rice and pot. As Minley and the dragon turned away, they could hear the monkeys chattering. That fishnet will not stop the monkeys from taking the rice, the dragon said. It is tightly woven, but their hands will probably fit through. I know, Minley said as she put out the fire. Let's pretend that we think the rice is safe, and we are letting it cool. So puzzled, the dragon nodded. They placed themselves a far distance from the rice, yet still within sight, put out the fire, and pretended to go to sleep. But Minley could not help peeking. Though she tried to lie still, she was filled with excitement. Would her plan work? 
Would the monkeys take the rice? In the bright light of the moon, the monkeys glanced slyly at them and stole over to the rice. The dragon was right. Just as he'd said, the fishnets could not keep the monkeys from the rice. Their slender hands slid through the holes of the fishnet and each grabbed two big fistfuls of rice. But as the monkeys tried to carry the rice away, the net caught them. The holes in the net were large enough for their empty hands to fit through, but not large enough for their full fists. The monkeys screamed and pulled, and Min Lee and the dragon no longer pretended to be asleep. They couldn't help laughing as they watched the monkeys struggling to punch the air and each other with their trapped fists. Minley quickly packed her things and the monkeys screeched and shrieked as they passed. The heavy pot of rice shook as the monkeys fought violently to get free. But the fishnet was strong and well woven and since the monkeys were too greedy to let go of the rice, Minley and the dragon entered the peach grove and continued through the forest. Thanks.